Welcome back to the show, everybody. Check out these headlines we have for you here. We got the Republicans double down on the SEC. Rosie Rios is in the news. You're going to want it. BIS is calling for a unified ledger. What could they possibly mean? XRP proposes cross chains. We got XLM, technical analysis, and XRP, 27 bucks by June. I don't have a problem with it. Somebody roll that beautiful intro. Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. You can follow us on TikTok, YouTube, and Twitter for exclusive content. Right now, it's $1.15 trillion market cap for crypto. The market is up 0.7%. Good afternoon, everybody. Bitcoin, 23900 plus. Ethereum, 1651 and change. Tether market cap, $70.5 billion, they're saying now. And $0.38 cents for XRP. We are off 0.4% on the 24-hour and 3% on the 7-day. But we don't stop there. Uphold, ladies and gentlemen, it's home of the altcoins. And why is Uphold different? Well, I'm going to tell you why. Because it's anything to anything. That's what's so special about them. They got so much that you can do, whether it's private equity to link to from your Uphold wallet. Click the link for both of these underneath the video. You will not be sorry that you did so. My favorite platform to date. Shout out to Uphold. And look at this. I'm going to be going to Cornova. 2023 for Corium, baby. Yeah, blast off to the future of blockchain technology as they celebrate the launch of Corium Mainnet in 29 days. And I'm going to tell you right now, I am excited to learn more about Corium smart contracts, 7,000 transactions per second. And I want to talk to the people themselves. I want to talk to Bob Ross. I want to talk to Fabio. I want to talk to everybody involved in Corium there and get as much information as I can. And I'm going to cover it for all of us. Very excited to learn more about that. And here we have Fred Rispoli making a call to all of us in the XRP community. He says here in our ETH deck lawsuit, it says, because uh, we know that R Fred Rispoli, we interviewed him here, here on this channel, shout out to Fred, is suing the SEC to find out whether Ethereum is or is not a security from their own lips. That's what he's looking for. And he says, I need your help to find all the videos where any SEC official is asked directly whether Ethereum is a security. Please include the source link in your reply. That's going to help him out a lot on that and all of us in the crypto space to get a level playing field. This here from Eleanor Terrett says Republican leaders renew the call for Gensler to comply with outstanding requests from Congress. I tell you, this goes as far as not only in the crypto, but it also drifts over into climate climate issues. Uh, from the SEC as well. A lot of people feel like those are issues that should be from another agency or department like the EPA, but they feel Gensler is overstepping based on his relationship and being a Democrat appointee. You know, uh, there is a lot of trouble here that Gary Gensler just doesn't want to be held accountable. It seems the only time he really is interested in testifying is if he can be in front of Elizabeth Warren, who apparently goes over the questions with him and the answers before he appears. Shout out to Tim for this one. He says, Ripple versus SEC, will a settlement be reached in the long-running lawsuit? No one knows. But what we do have to be aware of here, if there is a settlement, there can be no appeal, right? And if there is a settlement, that means there will be no precedent, essentially, to move forward on this case for the rest of the crypto space. So it's 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 a tough call. I don't know what will happen, but I think you should be aware of the side effects of a settlement. And I know we'd all like to get past this with clarity. That is the most important thing. Well, right here is the 43rd U.S. Treasurer, Rosie Rios, and she's also on the Ripple board. And boy, are you going to want to hear what she says about blockchain and everything else to go with it. Listen right here. What would I do as an investor? One, I would follow the money. Yes, it is my name on U.S. currency, almost $1.8 trillion with my name on it in currency circulation, so no one has made more money than I have. 
And we are following the money. We're stacking our pennies next to their dollars, aren't we? But if I were following the money, where is it going? It's going to the metaverse. It's going to blockchain. It's going to artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. Technology and innovation will be the key. And here's what's important to remember. In 2007 and 2008, we saw a huge growth of investment in technology and innovation. This was during the, town, the downturn. What was invented in 2007 that has turned our world upside down today? Anyone? The iPhone, very good. The iPhone was invented in 2007. There is no doubt, and then obviously subsequent to that, you saw Facebook, you saw Google, you saw Airbnb, you saw Uber. In one of our biggest downturns, innovation still mattered. And that's going to still be the case. This is a very resilient global economy. And a lot of that innovation is happening here. Absolutely, it's happening here. But when I think about the pillars of capital, financial capital, physical capital, intellectual capital, it is human capital that still remains the best investment to make. And I know that's happening here in this country. I know it's happening in the US. And I want people to remember that this relationship that the U.S. has with India is so important. You might recall that President Obama visited India twice during his administration. You also know that President Biden has had two in-person bilateral meetings with Prime Minister Modi. That relationship will absolutely, no doubt, continue. For the person who was born and, read, and, born and, and raised in Silicon Valley, I know firsthand the economic the political and the social influence the Indian community has had, the social influence that the Indian community has had in the U.S. and in Silicon Valley specifically. And I know that will absolutely continue. So to all of you, again, even though these are still uncertain times, this is also probably one of the most hopeful and opportunistic times that I have seen in quite a while. And there's no doubt in my mind that that innovation also, social influence. Well, let me tell you, I find it what very. What I do as an investor. Let me stop this. I find it very compelling that Rosie Rios is talking in India at the Global Business Summit, where we know Ripple has at least deep relationships and ties there. So this gets very interesting in understanding that Ripple is developing the pilot CBDC for uh, the Central Bank of Bhutan, who has very, very strong ties in supply and trade with India. This gets much more interesting to watch as we go forward. Uh, we will stay very close on it. Looking right here, this is powerful, ladies and gentlemen. This here is Augustine Karstens from the BIS, who is describing as he spoke in Sing Singapore, he says here, he described a ledger that would accommodate a variety of public and private projects in discrete but connectable parts. Let me listen. We've got quite a bit to go over here. Augustine's got quite a bit to say. Hmm. <laughs> The general manager of the Bank of International Settlements, Augustine Carson, spoke at Singapore FinTech Festival on February 22nd yesterday and described the digital financial infrastructure he believes would best suit central bankers' needs. He called that infrastructure a unified ledger. Carson's compared the theoretical unified ledger with a smartphone. Well, isn't that interesting that Rosie Rios was just asking about when the iPhone was created, the smartphone? These things are just remarkably coincidental. I don't find them to be, and I'm speculating, to be clear. But however, he says here, saying they both work seamlessly with a variety of components. Unlike a smartphone, a unified ledger would have open architecture, however, and would show programmability and composability. That is, it would run a bundle of smart contracts. There are over 2 million apps available to smartphone users. Karstens noted, he said, a unified ledger is a digital infrastructure with the potential to combine the monetary system with other registries of the real and financial claims. Holy moly, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, I know you're wondering what I'm wondering. Is the XRP ledger involved in this in any way or the interledger protocol? 
and the answer is yet to be uh, found, but it is absolutely a great question and something to want to find the answer to, isn't it? A unified ledger would not have to, de to be decentralized or permissionless, Carson said, but could accommodate a variety of projects that use of money as a means of payment and settlement, where the central bank plays a large role in the governance of the ledger and consumer facing sector is in private hands. Now, this is a quick three minute clip, but you're going to want to hear Gustin talk about it even further here. Take a listen. Monetary system, a unified programmable ledger. Give us a sense of why and what the vision hopes to achieve eventually. What we want is to lay the ground, the infrastructure for a modern uh, financial system. Now, it, it, the technology is moving very fast. We have a very solid foundation. So the idea is basically to use that solid foundation, incorporate the new technologies, and facilitate the development of a future financial system. What gaps in particular are you trying to fill? Well, one, of course, is that financial system, as, as e efficient as it is today, is still full of, 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 of transaction costs, compliance costs too. So one very important motivation is to reduce those uh, frictions as, as much as possible. The other thing is to onboard more people easily, more easy. Uh, for example, one of the main issues related to lack of in sufficient inclusion is that precisely transaction costs are very, very high. Therefore, to manage small payments or to give access to small firms or so small medium-sized enterprises or services to people in remote areas is still a major problem. What are the priorities for the BIS in 2023 is to focus on stable coins and CBDCs as well? I'm just wondering, in terms of regulation, what additional regulation do you foresee that's needed? Well, uh, uh, in terms of, uh, yes, cryptocurrencies need, need to be regulated. It, it is obvious now that it is necessary. Certainly aspects of consumer invest, investment protection is very important. And well, of course, also uh, focusing on 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 the, the the exchanges. The exchanges are key. How some uh, some of these activities interact with the traditional financial system? Some should be valid. Should, some should be tolerated. And those are the ones we should regulate. What do you think is impacting the views of central bankers the most right now when it comes to the crypto ecosystem? I mean, how much of it has to do with the FTX incident, for instance? Well, you know, a few years ago, uh, crypto assets and cryptocurrencies were, were in a way put as an alternative to, tro to, to fiat money. I think that battle has been won. Uh, technology doesn't make for trusted money. Uh, the most important aspect is for these activities not to have a systemic impact. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, at the end of the day, uh, if this grows dramatically and we have uh, events like FTX, uh, that at some point could have a systemic, a syst systemic impact. And that's something that we want uh, certainly to prevent. India, which is hosting the G20, is pushing for greater regulation on cryptocurrencies. What conversations are you expecting at the G20 and where are they in those conversations? I would say the most important body of the G20 uh, that has to do with financial activities is the Financial Stability Board. The Financial Stability Board, where ministers of finance, regulators, central banks get together and they decide, I would say, the main uh, rules of the game, I would say, for the international financial system. I anticipate a strong statement in favor of, of regulation. It will be up to each country to decide which particular approach they will follow in terms of the alternatives that there are out there. And there you have it right there, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, that's Augustine Carson saying it himself. And then we see this, XRP Ledger proposes cross-chain cross -chain bridge to increase network and token utility. You have to wonder if this could all be to serve the market infrastructure that really is the financial system, which is what Ripple has been working on doing since day one. You have to wonder. 
Let's take a look at some TA rate quick. Let's start with XLM, pricing comparison to XRP. Eggrag Crypto says here, he's been following XLM for a couple years, and he observed that the price of XLM is on average 30 to 40% plus or minus from the price of XRP. If this is the case, the below is XLM price prediction. The more XRP moons, the more XLM moons. What a nice little comparison here. Because I think we all have talked about over time about how there is this like, you know, one third price kind of differential, two third price differential between XRP and XLM. And right here we see that if XRP is three bucks, that would put Stellar uh, and XLM at one one hundred five, and if it gets to the twenty seven dollars, it would put XLM at nine forty five. Well, speaking of that, that's where we go back to Crypto Bull, who says here XRP finishes four triangle touches, just like in 2014, 2017, before it had its massive bull run. If we repeat, he says. And obviously it means we would have to repeat. It hasn't happened yet. He says that repeat could show us a $27 XRP by June. Now, none of this is financial advice and no one knows whether it will or it won't. But looking at this chart, it does feel like something we should constantly monitor because I remember the bull run that happened 2017 to 2018 was about 26 days or so. It went very quickly when it went. And if it does it again, I would imagine it would look much the same. Not financial advice to me or anyone else. It's just my digital perspectives. I'll catch all of you on the next one.